It would have been wrong to have been on the Kispiox and not stop to see Bob Clay's workshop. I had been fishing a custom bamboo rod that Bob had built for me, and I hadn't been able to put it down since my first day of using it. My name is Bob Clay, and I live in the Kispiox Valley. I've been here since 1977. I came here fishing in 1971 uh, from Calgary and fished every year here, and I liked it so much I moved here. So, you know, what better place could it be? So I've sort of molded my life around being here. So some people follow a career. Uh, I do anything I can to live here. So I was a carpenter, and then I was a fishing guide, and now I'm a rod builder. So I'll do what it takes to live here and uh, enjoy the place. Did your dad fish? No, my dad didn't fish, but my fishing mentor was an English guy. His name was Harry Honer, and uh, he ran the fishing department at Woodward's. Oh, okay. And Woodward's used to be closed on Mondays. So right. every Monday, because his wife had to have the car to go to work, and I had a car, we'd go fishing right. every week. So I learned to fly fish from him. You've got four children, mm -hmm. and they are all outdoors people. Right. And three of them are avid, avid steelhead anglers. Right. And they're incredibly talented. So when you moved out here, did you ever envision that you'd have this beautiful family? No. Nope. <laughs> Is it just the best it blessing? It just happens, you know, like, if you pursue what you like in life, then things happen, eh? Right. Right. The members of the Old Guard, or the people from the Old Guard, are really taking my hand through this journey I'm on. Uh, whether they mean to or not, a lot of them are long since deceased, and in reading and following their words, I'm discovering more about myself, but also about techniques, methodologies, philosophies, all the sorts of stuff that are in these old books. Can you talk to me a little bit about your library? I like history. I think, I think you do too, because it kind of draws you back to your roots. And um, also, there's a lot to be learned by reading these books. So if you have an inquisitive mind, you're always digging. So that's one of the aspects. But isn't it neat sometimes just to read somebody's account, like Autumn on the Spey or something, of them fishing the Spey River at a certain time period? And I go, wow, that must have been really neat yeah. back then, right? And I'm sure there's fishing writers now that are writing about our times. And every generation has their benchmark. So it'd be nice if you can get all those benchmarks and you can read the, the history as it goes along. I felt an unexplainable connection to my bamboo rod since before I'd ever even laid my eyes on it. Just knowing that somewhere, somebody else was custom designing and building a tool for me to have for the rest of my life was enough to forge a unique kind of bond with Bob, whether he knew it or not. Ultimately, I had commissioned an artist to create a piece of art, and there were times where I would imagine him and what I envisioned his small riverside workshop to look like while he split and wrapped the beginnings of my rod. Brown, how influential do you think he was? I mean, to me, he is the reason steelheading was popularized in the 30s. Yeah. He's a huge part of my book. He is the core of my book. Right. What he bought, he was a writer first, a fisherman second. And the way he described fishing has never been done, you know, before or after. So he could really write about the experience. When you read him, he takes you there, whether it's trout fishing or steelhead fishing. It really didn't matter. He wasn't a steel header as you know as we have uh, today. He was a fisherman and a writer and a romantic. He was, and that I think so, is why I enjoy his books right. so much. So when you read his books, I've never read any books that are so good. Even you read his non-fishing books, Measure of the Year. Oh, I haven't wonder, read that. Oh, it's a wonderful book. It's about his life as as a, a, you know a guy working there, milking a cow, raising his family, living on the banks of the river. It's a great book. And you're still there alongside yeah, him. Right, yeah, yeah.
already felt connected to Bob as I cast the bamboo, but to fish it right out in front of his house while he made dinner on the hillside looking down was one of the more surreal and memorable moments in my life.